Now, one question a lot of students have asked concerns what happens to the energy when these photons are stretched. We have these photons flying through space, and as space gets bigger, they get longer, and their wavelength gets longer. But a long wavelength photon, like a red one, has less energy than a short wavelength one. So the question is, where does this energy go? Is energy conservation violated here? So what's your take on this, Brian? So, Paul, this is actually quite a complicated uh uh, conversation we need to have here. So uh, we have to think of everything that's happening and this is all under the framework of general relativity so let's we're gonna go easy first and then we're gonna say it's actually a little harder than we say. So as the photon is traveling through the universe it's stretching and losing energy but the universe is slowing down. Now some people in their physics class will have the idea of of, of how energy happens when you expand, for example, a gas. So when you take, for example, a piston and you expand it, you do work. That is, that's a change of energy. And so that work is equal to the pressure times the change of volume. So that photon is actually changing the volume of space, and it has pressure. And so its loss of energy is actually going into essentially doing work on the universe. Another way to think about it is the sort of the, the total potential energy of the universe is changing. Yes, I guess whenever you've got, say, two objects sitting in space, they have a gravitational potential energy, yep. which is negative. And as you move them further away, it becomes less negative, so it goes up. Or well, because if you throw a ball in the air, the yep. potential energy goes up. So you've got space expanding, which is increasing its energy, because everything's moving further away from everything else. And just like throwing a ball up, there's more potential energy there. So you're saying that's partially cancelling out this loss of energy of the photons? Yeah, absolutely. And so within cosmology, we do have an accounting system. It's a little different than just energy. It's uh, something called the stress energy tensor. And we also have to take, it turns out, in account the shape of space. So as that photon stretches and slows the universe down, it actually changes the curvature of the universe. And that's another thing we need to account for. So this is all accounted for in this thing called the stress energy tensor within general relativity. And it's sort of like conserving energy. And we have to keep track of everything. And it turns out that quantity, that is conserved within general relativity. But to make it even yeah. harder, mm -hmm. it's really difficult to define what part of space, how do, how do I go through and define where things are conserved? And people get into fights uh, about this still. It's not completely clear. Yeah, so if you want to think of it in classical terms, which you can't quite because relativity is important here, yep. we have the energy of the photons, uh, we have the potential energy in the space, which is kind of like this curvature of space-time you're talking yep. about. And you also have kinetic energy, all of these galaxies moving around. And if you add them all together, that's giving you your stress energy tensor. And that actually, as far as we can tell, given we don't quite know how to do energy in general relativity, seems to be conserved. In fact, in the last course in the series, we will derive the equations for the universe as a whole by assuming the sum of those energies is, is conserved. Yes. But if you add up all these energies, I've heard some people say that it actually adds up to zero. Because the potential energy is negative, whereas the, if you take any bit of mass, you get energy in that equals mc squared, uh, plus the energy of the photons. Could it actually all be zero? It is possible that everything does add up to zero. And indeed, there's, I would say, an aesthetic uh, part of me that says it wouldn't it be nice if the universe really is, the sum of its parts is nothing. That is the notion of a universe from nothing. So the ultimate free lunch. Yeah, absolutely. So... That is possible. It has not been proven yet. It's one of those things that would be nice, I think, to make progress over the decades to come. Okay, so bottom line, uh, the energy from these photons is going into um, the energy of space-time, the potential energy. Energy is conserved, probably, but we don't quite know how to do the calculations, and it could be that the universe as a whole is a free lunch.